In this recording, we'll look at a first example of finding a volume of a solid of revolution using the DISC method, where we're going to look at a region bounded by a function y equals f of x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals a and x equals b. Well, and if we revolve the graph of y equals f of x about the x-axis, the volume of the resulting solid can be worked out as pi times the integral from a to b of the function f of x squared with respect to x. So let's have a look at how this works in the context of a specific example. So let's consider this case. Finding the volume obtained when the region above y equals naught, that's just the x-axis again, and below y equals 1 minus x minus 1 squared is revolved around the x-axis. When we're doing a problem like this, I always strongly recommend starting with the sketch of the situation so that we can see what region we're actually considering. In this case then, y equals 1 minus x minus 1 squared. Now y equals minus x squared is just a downward pointing parabola with a vertex at the origin. But this one at the start means the vertex has been shifted up 1 and the x minus 1 squared here means the vertex has also been shifted 1 to the right so that the vertex of this parabola would actually be at 1, 1. And to picture what this parabola looks like, it could also help to think about the y-intercept of it, which is when x is 0. Now if we put x equals 0 in there for the y-intercept of that parabola, we're going to get y equals 1 minus 0 minus 1 squared. That's actually just y equals 1 minus 1 is 0 when we work that out. So that means, in fact, when x is 0, y is 0, so that parabola actually intersects the origin. So from that information, we can now see an approximate sketch that our parabola for y equals 1 minus x minus 1 squared is going to look approximately like this. Therefore, the region we're interested in, that is the region that satisfies both these conditions, being above the x-axis and below the curve, must be this region in here that have now shaded in red. We know that this value of x here is actually x equals 0. We saw that because we just saw that the y-intercept was actually at the origin in this example. But what is this value over here that bounds the region on this side? To find out what that is, we need to know the other point where y equals 1 minus x minus 1 squared cuts the x-axis. That is, we need to know what the other x-intercept of the graph is here. To find that, we could just solve 1 minus x minus 1 squared equal to 0. Expanding out the brackets here, we get 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1, remembering that negative sign out the front will affect everything in here, solving that equal to 0. That then becomes negative x squared plus 2x equal to 0. We can take x out as a common factor here, giving x times negative x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, we can see the solutions to that uh, x equals 0 or 2. How does this relate back to our graph? Well, we already saw the x equals 0. That's consistent with our diagram. But that's telling us this other x-intercept, which is the other side bounding the region we're looking at, that occurs when x equals 2. Therefore, we now know that the part of the parabola we're looking at, which I'm actually now going to highlight in blue is this part here. We're interested in the region there bounded by that and the x-axis in that region. And if you imagine visually what would happen if we revolved that region around the x-axis, we'd get some type of a solid shape which would have vertical cross-sections being circles. 
In other words, if we imagine revolving that, this is a very approximate sketch, we would get some sort of a region that would look something like this. And what we're wanting to know is what would the volume of that solid be. And we now have enough information to work out the volume. This was our formula for the volume of the resulting solid here, pi times the integral from a to b of f squared x dx. And we now know what f of x is. That was just the 1 minus x minus 1 squared, representing the parabola in this case. Therefore, a the volume is pi times the integral of... Now we also know what a to, and b are now. a is 0. B is 2 in this case, since those are the x values that bound our region. Therefore, we're wanting the volume is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 minus x minus 1 squared, and that's all squared. We're working out the integral of that with respect to x. Now we saw before in fact, when we're working out points of intersection of the graph, that this expression here, 1 minus x minus 1 squared, that actually simplifies down to minus x squared plus 2x. So we're wanting pi times the integral of that squared with respect to x. Then if we expand and simplify some more, we actually end up with x to the power of 4 minus 4x cubed plus 4x squared is the integrand here. So we're wanting to work out pi times the integral of that expression from 0 to 2. The antiderivative becomes x to the 5 on 5 minus 4x to the 4 on 4, which just becomes x to the 4 plus 4x cubed divided by 3, and we're evaluating that from 0 to 2. That will then just become pi multiplied by the antiderivative evaluated at 2 minus the antiderivative evaluated at 0. Therefore, it will become pi times 2 to the 5 on 5 minus 2 to the 4 plus 4 times 2 cubed divided by 3 minus, and the rest's all just going to become 0. 0 to the 5 on 5 minus x to the 4, that's 0 to the 4 plus 4 lots of 0 to the 3 on 3. Subtracting all of that off will just be subtracting 0. And when we simplify that further, we find in this case that the volume is in fact 16 pi divided by 15 for the resulting solid. So I always strongly recommend, as in this case, when you're working out a volume of a region like this, having a look at a sketch of the situation to start with, as that will make it clear where you're looking at a bounded region in this case, and you'll also then be able to see any relevant points of intersection of curves. So this is a first example of volumes of solids of revolution using the DISC method.